So India's goal of creating a successful semiconductor ecosystem recently reached a new milestone as the Israel-based International Semiconductor Consortium announced plans to begin construction on India's first semiconductor fabrication plant as soon as February of 2023. The Indian conglomerate uh, Vedanta and Taiwanese manufacturer Foxconn also recently invested $19.5 billion to build semiconductor and display production plants in Gujarat uh, and are expected to start construction within the next two and a half years. In order to meet its own domestic semiconductor demand and obtain access to one of the most valuable technologies in the world, India has been investing in domestic semiconductor production. India's goal is to become a top world leader in the semiconductor space. Government officials and politicians have acknowledged the sector's significance for India's future, with the Prime Minister of India declaring that it is the collective aim to establish India as one of the key partners in global semiconductor supply chains. Domestic semiconductor consumption is anticipated to surpass $80 billion in the year 2026. Uh, despite these ambitious goals, however, India still has some other problems they should deal with first. Um, India has previously entered the semiconductor market. Uh, back in the mid-2000s, India was a strong candidate to house an Intel chip plant, but the project was abandoned when the government was unable to properly adopt a semiconductor investment strategy. India's dysfunction during this Intel bid process actually deterred other investors from seriously considering India for many years. Uh, in 2019, though, the Modi administration revived the country's semiconductor efforts and launched the India Semiconductor Mission as part of its Make in India initiative. The India Semiconductor Mission, also known as ISM, is a $10 billion incentive plan which offers financial support of up to 50% of a project's cost to build and manufacture. Uh, this investment plan is partly what attracted attention from the International Semiconductor Consortium and Foxconn. Uh, aside from this, there have also been other major investments and expressions of interest submitted to the Indian government since the year 2019. But ISM actually lags behind tens of billions of dollars and in tax incentives that other countries are already providing. Uh, the European Union, the United States, and China have all announced or passed major semiconductor initiatives in the past year, including a 43 billion euro package in the EU Chips Act, um, 50 billion dollars in the United States Chips and Science Act, and a 143 billion dollar Chinese plan. Uh, creating a semiconductor manufacturing ecosystem requires some significant investments and tax incentives from the government in order to keep companies inside the country. Uh, India has yet to make the same level of commitment to the industry stabilization and future investments as some of its competitors. Aside from government support, uh, building a semiconductor manufacturing industry requires exceptional talent uh, India actually already has a strong semiconductor research and design industry and has been attracting more research centers in the recent months. Additionally, uh, India's top engineering schools like the Indian Institute of Technology have been partnering with universities across the world to create specialized educational programs for design and production. While India has an adequate semiconductor talent supply uh, with opportunities to expand it, other resources such as raw materials, water, and energy will be tougher to come by. Uh, China controls many of the metals and alloys needed and India would need to either import these materials or invest heavier in its own mining industry.
India actually holds over 6% of the world's rare earth reserves, some of which are vital for semiconductor production, and some Indian companies have already been urging their government to take advantage of this. Expanding this industry, however, would require a lot of time and heavy financial investment to keep up with the demand. Water and energy are two other very important resources in semiconductor production, and India already does not have enough of either. Um, reports show that almost 6% of India's population actually lack access to safe drinking water. And adding massive semiconductor factories, which can use enough water per day to supply around 300,000 households to the mix, would further strain this supply. So there seems to be a very serious supply demand issue going on here. Uh, production at India's already established electronics manufacturers has been troubled by power outages and coal shortages this year. Uh, India has been working on increasing adoption of renewable energy to expand the power grid and to solve some of these problems, but it is unclear how long it will actually take to relieve the pressure on the power grid currently. Despite large investments in semiconductor manufacturing, uh, a lack of power, water, and government competence will actually hinder India's ability to turn into any kind of semiconductor powerhouse based on their recent projects. Um, creating a sustainable semiconductor ecosystem is not a simple task whatsoever and the world's current chip powerhouses took decades to develop. So India's efforts to grow the semiconductor industry are not likely to be very successful in the near term uh, given its challenges managing the Make in India campaign and providing the fundamental resources that are required to optimize the semiconductor progress. Uh, instead of building a highly complex semiconductor ecosystem on top of an already minimal resources, India's government would be better off concentrating on increasing access to power, water, and possibly education. Um, there are some other important underlying issues that should be addressed and solved before jumping into such a complex and resource dense industry. Um, but I hope you did find some value from this video. Uh, hopefully you learned something new that you didn't know before. Uh, maybe drop me a comment on what you think of India's venture into this semiconductor space. Uh, I'd appreciate it if you could leave me a like and subscribe for more videos just like this.